This is a quick demonstration of how I use Long Exposure Stacker. I'm going to start here in Lightroom with my images and show you how I do raw conversion of the images because the images come in as raw files and Long Exposure Stacker requires TIFF files for input. So uh, here are all my images. I have them all selected here. Uh, there's 52 in total. Most of them are light frames, but I have 10 dark frames at the end here. The dark frames are used by Long Exposure Stacker for noise reduction. They are captured at about the same time as I capture the light frames. In this case, I captured them just after I captured the light frames. And to capture them, I just uh, put the lens cap on and uh, cover the uh, viewfinder with my hand so no light comes in the back of the camera, and then shoot 10 frames in this case with exactly the same settings as I used for the light frames. Uh, and we'll process the dark frames identically to the light frames and run them through with a uh, long exposure stacker for noise reduction. Okay, so here's uh, what our images look like. We have a little waterfall in the pond and some really bright highlights on this rock and some bright highlights in the waterfall. But we also have lots of interesting detail in these roots here in the dark areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by bringing the contrast all the way down. Now this is going to give more information here in the darks to Long Exposure Stacker so they can work with those and reduce the noise here. And then later on in uh, further processing after we've used Long Exposure Stacker, we can try and bring in uh, some detail here and some contrast back to the whole image without introducing noise. So in this case, uh, contrast all the way down. And that's, for me, that's fairly common to bring the contrast a long way down or even all the way down. Uh, another thing I have to do here is uh, the white balance. Uh, I leave my camera in automatic all the time. Uh, if I try and synchronize uh, the settings I'm doing here across all my images, it will synchronize automatic. That won't solve uh, anything. What I really want to do is change this to custom. And now when we synchronize, these specific numbers will be synchronized rather than synchronizing the notion of automatic across the, all the images. So that's all I'm going to do in the basic settings right now. Nothing under tone curve, nothing here, split toning, nothing. Detail, very important. Turn sharpening off and uh, all the noise reduction off. By default, there's some sharpening and some noise reduction. We want those off because we want the cleanest, uh, most original possible image going to long exposure stacker. And if we want later to apply more uh, noise reduction or sharpening, we can do that after we've processed with long exposure stacker. Uh, lens corrections. I always remove chromatic aberration and nothing else. Again, it's trying to give the simplest, cleanest image possible to long exposure stacker so it can do the best possible job. And that's all the uh, corrections we're going to do here or changes we're going to make uh, to our images during raw processing. As you saw, we have all of our images selected so we can simply synchronize. And we're going to synchronize white balance, basic tone, sharpening, noise reduction, lens corrections, and so on. And we're going to synchronize. So that's done. And then next we're going to export all of our images. So we'll choose export. And let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select my preset here to choose folder later. Uh, rename to, well, I'm not going to rename them. Leave them the same. Video, there's nothing to do. File settings. Make sure the image format is TIFF. Color space, uh, some people prefer ProPhoto RGB, some sRGB. Uh, ProPhoto RGB has a slightly larger gamut, so I tend to use it. Compression, none. This is the important one. The default is 8 bits per com component. You want 16 bits per component. Again, that's a matter of giving as much information as possible to long exposure stacker. Don't resize the image. Don't sharpen the image. Include all the metadata because the metadata will get copied to the output file by Long Exposure Stacker, and then that metadata is available uh, in any image processing you do later with the output from Long Exposure Stacker. Uh, no watermark, uh, no post-processing, and we just say export, and we're going to choose a place to put it, photos for Long Exposure Stacker, into demo 2. Oh, look at that, I've done this before. We're going to say open, I'm going to say overwrite, and I'll sit back and wait for uh, Lightroom to do its thing. Now that we have made all of our TIFF files with uh, Lightroom, we can go to Long Exposure Stacker. And this is how it uh, comes up. It uh, 
offers to show us some documentation, we can disable this message in the future by simply checking this box here. I'll leave that unchecked and we will carry on. It comes up and offers uh, to read some files. I'm going to skip these two that uh, files that I created on a previous take of this video and select all of uh, our light frames and dark frames, all 52 of them, and I will hit open. And now the uh, long exposure stacker is reading all these files and attempting to classify them as light, dark, or flat field frames. And usually it does a very good job of that. But in this case, uh, our light frames are a little bit dark, so it's not certain. So I can scroll down here. I can see that all these files are being classified as light frames. And then we have some dark frames. I can look at the numbers here and know that that, that break in the numbers tells me that's the, where we're going from uh, light frames to dark frames. So this is all good, and I will tell it to carry on. If, uh, if it hadn't gotten that right, I could have uh, simply clicked in those little circles and changed things from light to dark or tell it to ignore the files. And now it's uh, doing the processing and it's going to compute uh, each of uh, six, I believe it is, uh, different compositions of these 42 light frames. Before it does that, it computes the average of the 10 dark frames and subtracts that average from each of the 42 light frames. And this reduces fixed pattern noise. Uh, you can see some fixed pattern noise sometimes in some of the very dark areas when you brighten them a lot. But uh, with the dark frame subtraction, that fixed pattern noise pretty much goes away. So we're done, and according to my stopwatch, that was 52 seconds uh, to compute these six different versions. So this is mean, and we can do mean with outliers removed, very similar. Uh, outlier removal is useful if there's a person or a car or an airplane or something moving through your shot. As long as that thing is moving through fairly consistently, uh, outlier removal generally does a very good job of removing that object. Uh, max is interesting in this case because it shows us some of these highlights here in the in the waterfall, and oh, um, uh, I have some more files that I've exported from the Lightroom. surface of the pond a little bit and, uh, well different the texture. Open them. Uh, median is going to give us a result very similar to mean, but I think it carry on. Of the course, texture is a little bit stronger here, here at, in uh, the, and that's uh, it. Pond. So my pref preference in this case is mean. So I can save that by saving the current selection. It uses the name of the first file in the stack, and it attaches uh, the name of the algorithm. Uh, and of course, it's already there from a previous take, so I'll replace it. I can also save the median if I want, but this time instead of clicking here, I'll just say Command S, and we can save that. And again, uh, there's already a version there. And now that we're done, we can take our images and uh, go to Photoshop or Affinity Photo and do some further processing with them.